This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, I'm back. I feel like absolute hell, so I am probably not going to use as much of my voice um, on this episode. You can skip ahead, check things out, all that kind of stuff. If there's anything super important, I'll bring it up, but I might just be reading off the titles and doing like a one sentence description just so there's enough time for you to click on it and, uh, you know, search for it if that's what you're looking for. And uh, that's it. If you're one of the third of the people that come back to this page every week to see stuff and you still have not subscribed, how about help me out with a sick day by clicking on it so that uh, I can take a little more time off when I'm sick like this. Other than that, you've got a lot of things coming up. There are 51. I threw off the 52nd because it was just in poor taste, and I didn't like it. So it's my world. I'm going to do what I want. And uh, you guys can leave whatever opinions you like in the description or in the comments under the description. And check the description for links to the various campaigns and jump buttons if you can't use the timeline bar. Let's get it going. First up, we have Groundhogs Against Humanities. This is a Cards Against Humanity. Um, this is a, an expansion for it. Cards Against Humanity is currently trying to be sold, so I'm not really sure what the fate is of that. Max Temkin got uh, me too for some bad behavior in his Chicago place, and uh, they're trying to get sold off to another company. So I'm not sure what the fate of that is going to be. These look like they have been written in other uh, non-official uh, expansions before if you check out the various communities for Cards Against Humanity the things that they're showing here have been seen before so it's up to you whether or not you want to pick this up um, but it may not give you the thrill of having something new like it was before I do not think that they have given a full card list they have not and uh, you know but the stuff that it, that's on there like clouds of cigarette smoke I've definitely seen in many other uh, unofficial expansions. This is another one that is an interesting idea. This is extreme vacuuming, but it was made by kids. And here's the thing. That's all it is. Um, it's selling itself as you're going to vacuum an area for 30 seconds. It's not going to give you anything to vacuum up. Basically, you could use a toddler's toy and achieve the same result as a game instead of using your regular vacuum and then either dirtying your place up or uh, causing something to get stuck in the vacuum and having a very expensive repair. Obviously, they, they did not think this through, um, but uh, if you wanted to run around for 30 seconds, maybe it will come with a timer. Uh, I think it's just gonna come with a pamphlet because it just doesn't seem like they've included anything other than these pictures of a woman vacuuming. This is an interesting concept, dub this, where you can mix and match any song. I do not think that they have any actual songs uh, as part of it. Um, it's a $25 game that comes with interchangeable cards. So you get uh, different ideas, concepts, different things that you can put on snippets and switch them around. The publishing rights are a bitch for every song in existence. So uh, that's one quick way of getting around that is by only putting the maximum number of words before you have to worry about publishing rights and mixing and matching it into a song. So um, it's like ad libs or mad libs for songwriting and it could be a lot of fun depending on the people you're with. Joshua Mason is a creator that makes little tiny card games and these are seven more. Kittens love sushi kaput, happy little trees and other things. If you are into tiny games, then this is where I would say to check out for the week. Um, as you can see, it's all this cute um, Japanese style, kind of like a Hello Kitty um, situation. And maybe this is a Bob Ross tribute, uh, whatever the case is, you can check it all out. Um, space themes, nature themes, ice cream themes, all different cutesy things. And if you go all the way, down to the bottom he usually has some way to pick up uh, other games yeah see these are all like puppers and doggers and into the sea these are the 30 something odd games that he's already released you probably can pick up because they're just little card packs and here's the big one first 48 hours you get yourself an orco as part of this masters of the universe fields of eternia by archon studio it is about going into the past and trying to thwart skeletor so it doesn't affect any of the rest of the storytelling bad guys are in yellow good guys are in blue paint them however you need and then you move from area to area 
If you have a 3D printer, I think you can print yourself off some really cool things to go with it. I do not think this has anything to do with the one Cool Mini or Not is coming out with as well. I think they're trying to strike while the iron's hot with the new Netflix uh, show from Kevin Smith. Um, you have a day since it's already been out for 12 hours or so. Um, you have about a day whenever you see this to uh, pick it up and get that Orco if that's what you want. There is a very short window on this. It is only going to be two weeks and every day is going to get an unlock. Uh, I think that's probably the B guy for tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's hard to say who all the folks are. I don't remember all their names. But uh, I think this one at the top is Merman. That's going to be my guess. And, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of folks. The silhouettes look familiar. Maybe this is the sorceress. Um, but I don't remember the names. I used to work for Mattel, but we didn't have the He-Man franchise. I used to have to work on Diva Stars and rescue heroes games for two and three year olds so yeah 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 yeah. and this appears to be a simple but multifunctional game called inertia this is about the ice um i'm not sure if this is a hunter gatherer society uh but it says it's from an imaginary past that's cool um you've got ice you've got mountains you got a bunch of different things that you can do it is not a single game. It is supposed to be a bunch of different games that you can create based on the, um, or at least they have 12 different maps that you can create based on the components that are here. N nothing too crazy, nothing that will scare anybody. It just is a simple move your little markers type of game and uh, try to make it to your, your home. So interesting ideas, valleys, homes, mountains, lakes, all that kind of fun stuff. So uh let's take a look what a map is like very simple so if you wanted to play something that was less complicated maybe than checkers with your kids then uh, this might be a way to start that off and same kind of thing here we have 40 decks 40 card decks of monsters and you can use them in three different games this is best monsters so if we scroll down uh you know they kind of look like pokemon and that's kind of what you're getting so uh they're all card based but they have a little cutesy um, I don't know what, what you would call it, <laughs> kind of world to it. You probably have something in your country. Did you know that the number two country is not Canada for listening or looking at this channel? It's not the UK. I was surprised. It's Germany. Uh, most of the people, uh, the highest number of people coming to this channel to watch stuff every week are German, then Canadian and English and then Polish. So welcome to all you folks and hope uh, you get some good use out of it. I'm going to guess it's a bunch of people from Awaken Realms that have to watch my painting videos on a loop because that would make sense for the Polish stuff. Not that I don't enjoy all the Polish people. The uh, Olympic, a lot of the Olympic uh, uh, athletes were uh, quite, uh, quite delightful. I'm going to tell you that from that country. So good job, Polish people. Uh, spy sabotage. I'm not saying much about it because wanting $45,000 for a simple card game is not going to happen. Take a look at how much these things actually make. It's going to be close to 10% of that. Um, but this is an auction game. If you needed one of those things, it has cell phones and other things like that. Um, the packaging could use a little help because it kind of looks like just a card game, like a playing card game like you would get from Bicycle. So it needs uh, something that uh, evokes more of that spy stuff in order to uh, to make it really shine and jump out at people because all, if, all you see is that black box what would come in a black box that looks like it with that kind of symbol it does not look like a safe it looks like a deck of playing cards or a big you know case of playing cards then we have npc cards this is the non-politically correct card game it doesn't look like it is trying to single anyone out i did throw out a game that was specifically trying to single one type of group of out um and if that's just not fun if it's not for everybody at your table this has some kind of alien thing going on uh fairly low price point it looks like you get one deck for uh about 20 bucks so that's about what you'd pay at the store um not a lot of description as to what the game has or where it would go but it looks like people are trying to explain things to aliens there's one side and the other maybe it's like that one star trek episode hard to say but uh, if you were looking for something to maybe challenge uh opinions uh shake people up to make sure that they really felt uh what they were saying rather than just repeating it then maybe this would be uh, a way for you to do that and stick wars i don't even think this is the first game named stick wars 
but for fifty thousand dollars no that's not going to happen um there are stick figure games out there this is uh interesting and all but when you are looking for something that is going to make that kind of money um you got to do better than just lined paper and a figure you got to give it some type of extra style so uh this will have to come down to about five hundred dollars and then maybe you'll find enough people to do that but otherwise you know it's just if it had the level of quality for the stick figures as what you see with these two and not so much just the random generic with no real um no continuity necessarily for the perspective or how it's supposed to run or do different things there's no gradients there's nothing i get that it's supposed to be a stick figure but you can make the stick figure part work even though um you can add some details and things to make it really sing and be worth the money so ask yourself if you would go and you would pay ten dollars for somebody else's stick figure drawings chances are pretty low the game would have to be really good and if the game was really good, then why would you saddle it with bad art? Just change it up. Then we have one of those games that is going to make a ton of money, as it already has. This is Flamecraft, and it is, it's got dragons, it's got witches, and it's got food. Those are all things that make uh, do very well on uh, sales. So Tiny Artisan Dragons, you can see they've got the plastic figurines for each one. That helps. And then the rest is all just like the plastic components from there. If you want to compete in the instead of worker placement, dragon placement with engine building, then uh, maybe this is for you. And art style doesn't look like it's that much more complicated than a highlights magazine. So you should be okay with uh, playing with your, your youngins. Over the weekend, I went looking to see if there was more stuff in other categories. And in puzzles, I found this one. This is an escape box puzzle. That is laser cut. So if uh, you want something that um, has some interesting dials and challenges and things like that to go along with it, then uh, this laser cut piece is probably not going to break the bank. Uh, I would say about 100 bucks once it's shipped to you. It tells a little story, and uh, it's kind of neat. I like watching some people break these things open. It looks like there are short films that you would watch to go along with it. So that part is neat. And one of the other places I looked was card games, most of which were just tarot cards or playing cards. Um, a couple of them were actual card games like this one, uh, Reiner Nietzsche's, Nietzsche's, Reiner Nietzsche's Criminal Capers Collection. So Soda Smugglers, Puma Fiosi, and Hot Lead. So it looks like they're integrating animals into Criminal Capers. So if you want that kind of stuff, looks like at 20 minutes they are uh, going to not be too terrible. Um, and they have, you know, neat little pieces of artwork and all that pretty high quality uh for the price so you see what i mean if you're going to charge 20 bucks then uh, it, you should at least get some colors and things like that going on then if you're a fan of mice and mystics maybe you want something a little more dragon themed this is wicked and wise a trick taking game that includes dragons and mice you need at least a dragon and a mouse so that's uh, players two to six and maybe it's like the elephant that's afraid of the mouse who knows um but it's uh, pretty neat looking. It looks uh, art-wise a little like uh, the same artist from Mysterium, uh, maybe uh, that type of scale level. So pretty good. And um, yeah, you're just playing cards and make a decision of which part of the fantasy world are you a part of, the big one or the little one. Then we have another one of those uh, types of card games, which says it's supposed to build uh, connections. They really just ask you a lot of questions. Sometimes that can be fun for a night, um, which uh, kind of takeaway food am I? So that is, uh, they're from Hong Kong. Okay. So I was going to say it's like a British way of saying things. Um, yeah, hopefully this won't get you in any fights. So <laughs> we'll see how that part goes. Um, which kitchen utensil am I? I don't know. I'm uh, something stabby probably. Then at the old job, I was doing a lot of stuff for... Uh, this one company that imports European crime dramas into the United States and then puts them up on Acorn. And I got to see a lot of them, and they're actually pretty good. So maybe County Durham, UK, the Investigations Armchair Detectives game has some cool things in it. Um, it looks like they're doing a good job of making it look like real police evidence. So that part's always great. Um, it's something you can kind of sink your teeth into. The more realistic it is, the more you understand what to do with it uh, instead of the more abstract stuff. 
where you can just get lost in trying to figure out what the hell is this thing's uh, significance. Whereas these with maps and pictures and all that, you can kind of sort through it and figure it out for yourself. If you are a true crime buff, or let's say your mom is or somebody else, then uh, maybe this will be something for you to pick up for them. I don't have a big family, so when it came to the holiday season, uh, it was always my dad's birthday on uh, uh, Christmas Eve, so we would only celebrate his birthday. But when I'd go to work, uh, we'd have all the Christmas theme stuff, and uh, it was a lot of fun to do the white elephant uh, exchanges, people stealing back and forth, because uh, there was like 50 people, so it made it kind of fun. Um, that's what this is supposed to evoke. It's supposed to be a card game about that. And now would be the time to purchase things on Kickstarter so that they can get put together. They're saying October delivery. So usually delivery means that's when it gets on a boat and then two months later it shows up and then three weeks later it shows up for you. So you might get it by Christmas if you pick it up now. And then we have another fantasy type game. This is the Dwarf Gem Hunt. Two to four players it has really awesome 3D art. And then they didn't really do anything else with the 2D art except make these really awesome 3D models. So maybe the designers are 3D modelers themselves and that's why that part came together. Um, it's hard to see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, if there's skeletons and other things that you would find in whatever fantasy level of dwarf world you are in, great. Um, looks like they're trying to make a board and they're trying to do a few things. But... Um, I'm hoping that it improves quite a bit uh, by the time you actually pick it up. And there's a lot of room for these fantasy style games. So just check and see if this is one that you would enjoy. We do not see a lot of Venn diagrams for games. We see a lot of Venn diagrams for memes. So here you go. Uh, maybe this will help you generate memes. The thing being uh, wanting $70,000, you'll get 700 maybe. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that just chases people away. I don't know why people put the most extravagant number they can come up with. Like, put the lowest number that you can get the game made with, and you'll get the game made, and then maybe you'll get a second printing to do all the crazy stuff. So, I don't know. People are not doing enough research. Um, but it, it's a very simple game. Um, they would have to sell... <laughs> okay. Uh, a limited edition version for $140. Um... Or a regular limited edition version, calling it a first version. There is nothing here that you can't get from GameCrafter for twenty-five bucks. So, um, I would say wait and buy something else. These people need therapy more than they need to make a game. I did not play Sea of Legends, but maybe you did. This is a new game from those folks. A Noble War, strategize theme, scheme, plot. You want area control. Um, so you have a fantasy world with uh, lots of interesting looking characters. They look a lot like um, the ones from Besieged, uh, which is an early Quimini or Not game about tower defense. So they fit pretty well. Most people just buy Besieged at this point using these D&D miniatures because the game was so damn hard. But uh, for 75 bucks, you do get a fair amount of plastic. Um, that seems to be kind of the price right now because of the prices of everything have gone up uh, normally this would probably be like a $50 box but um, them's uh, the new uh, the new normals so lots of uh, interesting little bits that you can check out artwork looks good if you think that you would use any of these in your RPGs then uh, you would probably not be the first nor the last these guys look pretty cool they would fit um, in any of those like Japanese style uh, Final Fantasy type games, just the way that the proportions are all, um, you know, set up. So they look pretty neat if that's what you're into. My head is pounding, so I'm gonna try and speed this up. A mass. This is a um, a resource gatherer. You get some meeples. That's pretty cool, but for the most part, it kind of looks like uh, similar to a real life version of FTL. Um, if you played that uh, video game, so maybe not real life, but a, a physical copy of FTL is um, the way the map looks like it plays out. Or maybe some old Atari games. There's nothing wrong with any of that. We have another music-based game. Um, I'm not really sure how well it will work. You would have to know all of the songs. Uh, I used to live in Phoenix. Big Red Radio would play a lot of things that would not play anywhere else. So uh, I don't know where this folks <laughs> uh, are going to put uh, something about moms getting drunk at bar mitzvahs. Maybe it'll be funny. Maybe it'll be... Interesting, but even putting the names of certain songs can get you in a lot of publishing trouble. So 
I don't know. Yeah, take a look at the video and all that and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. Um, you probably have to have a lot of fans that are into music trivia, though, in order to know all the songs. Then we have Empire Plateau, another strategy board game. Um, you know, a couple hours making a grand is pretty good. $20,000 in this market, who knows? That's hard to say. Uh, you got a world map, and you're going to be moving back and forth. I would say if you're uh, a fan of world domination, maybe you play Risk with your friends, that this might be the way to go. Very simple pieces. Um, almost 3D printable. I don't think that they have a print and play type, but uh, they have coasters and things like that. So maybe if you're into coasters, you could pick it up. Um, so it says that it's been getting a, a fan base on uh, Board Game Geek, um, or maybe that they're just trying to to launch it. So that wouldn't be terrible, but I think if you wanted to do that, print and play would be a good place to start. You know, I love me some Lovecraft, and a lot of you uh, like both men and women, uh, the few women <laughs> that are on the channel. It's so depressing. You should really turn on the, uh, the thing that says, tell YouTube your gender so that they know you exist, and they will make things, uh, they will pay attention to you. Because right now it says I have 100% men, and I know that's not the case, because there's uh, some uh, ladies out there that like the game books, they like the solo RPGs, and I'm a fan of uh, the Call of Cthulhu type stuff. Call of Cthulhu has two solo RPG, uh, like the game book is the GM type of uh, missions. One is from the starter kit and one you can pick up from uh, um, Drive Through RPG. And this is similar in that way. Obviously, it's not Call of Cthulhu, but it is going to have some of those Lovecraftian, Cosmic Horror, and Existential Dread type themes. Five British pounds comes out to about seven dollars if you uh, pick it up and uh, go from there so you know you can play along on holiday you can play along on a weekend uh, that kind of fun stuff or even maybe riding the bus and I feel like we've seen one of these recently uh, trick shot says it's the second created um, but you know maybe it is maybe it isn't uh, trick shot if you pull these off and then um, you try to make whatever the trick is, so you're going to be required to have a basketball court of some type. Maybe you are a coach, and this will be useful, um, or you're just trying to make practice go a little bit more fun uh, for your kids. That might be the way to go. So uh, if you're into basketball, if you're into trying to do all this stuff, if you're into any of those, I don't know, what are they on TikTok now, um, sites where uh, people make trick shots and try to make a bunch of money from it, Maybe this will be some inspiration to learn how to do that stuff. And then we have Adversity. It's like SimCity, uh, but it's a card game. So there's going to be devastating disasters just like in SimCity, just like what's going on outside my window, <laughs> all the fires that's screwing up my sinuses. Um, but yeah, three to four players, so you can't just play with one other person. Um, just keep that part in mind. Uh, customs friendly for all the shipping areas. I mean, it's just some cards, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it manufactured where it needs to go and shipped where it needs to go and uh yeah different types of um locations that you would have like i said put together in sim city and now they are going to be destroyed by various uh disasters um pick your favorites i guess uh famine quite slow volcano quite quick so lots of different variety there lots of people popping out their laser engravers this is tic tac idaho so this is a potato based and Idaho-based tic-tac-toe thing. Um, I don't know if there are enough of a population of people in Idaho to get to the, the goal. That's kind of the thing. Uh, if it was just potato-based and expanded further, then I think you might be able to pull in more folks. Um, but I think, you know, it's a neat idea. It's cute. But you're better off maybe selling it in, like, um, little mom-and-pop stores and... Uh, Hopefully you'll be able to get it manufactured. Looks like you already have the laser engraver, so it's just about buying the wood and maintaining the laser. Um, that might be an easier way to uh, to keep it going. It's just hard because if you were in a state or you did this for a state that had a really high population, Florida, New York, California, then you just have a bigger, wider audience um, that most people, and by I say most people, I mean like go look at the numbers, don't move out of 100 miles from where they were born. So, I mean, that's that's a pretty small place from Idaho. 
Then we have another one of those animal themed uh, type of deals with the fox and the hare and all that. Two to four players, ages seven and up, uh, minimalist artwork going on. It's not the end of the world. Very minimalist on the box art. Um, I'm not sure why there's different colors, but maybe they come with both. And uh, yeah, it looks like eight animals in each box. Uh, one is competitive and the other one is not so competitive. So maybe that's like the adult one and then the regular one. Um, that's an interesting idea. So if you are playing with kids, then you don't have to like sort through the cards and all that first. You can just jump on the one that um, lets you play through. And then when the kids get better, then lay the smack down. Then we have another one of those card games I pulled out of the card game stack. Another one from Poland. So there you go, guys. Well, you know, more Polish stuff. Cool. You guys have some of the best artists. Uh, Awaken Realms has definitely proven that. Um, with both 2D and 3D art. It's really amazing the stuff that comes out of there. Boom! The card game. Two players, speed and reflex. Um, there's dynamite. There's all this kind of stuff going on. There were a few other games that were also dynamite based that in the last three months have popped up so um there are definitely people doing it definitely people playing it it's going to be competing with something like exploding kittens so uh yeah i mean if you're into those types of games you don't mind the, the booms then uh maybe this is for you to check out uh simple uh, it doesn't look like there's much more than uh numbers on the the card just pop up is that animated I don't know. Ah, it is animated. So, <laughs> maybe that's why I'm missing something. Uh, I'm getting out of it. So, I'm getting out of this, too. Go check it out if you want it. And if you are into steampunk, this is the 1887 Robert Bale and Bale of the Hollow Keystones, an adventure card game. There's a lot of words going on there. There's not a lot of art. And that might be why they're having such a hard time getting people to back it. Um, I'd love it if there was a great story. If there is a great story, I hope they find a way to tell it. Uh, keeping in mind that it is difficult for people, especially when you're going to the phones and other stuff, to be able to click on all the little links. They won't always pop up the same places that you, you think they're going to pop up. So it is good to just throw in the artwork. You know where the artwork would go? Before any environmental commitments. This is a bottom of the, the, the explanation thing. Story, great. At the top, and show how the game plays. And then you get into how sustainable and all that you are. Because you know what? They will already care when you've put right here what the game is about, and then they'll care about all this stuff. If you just want to bring up this stuff, if they do or don't care, they're not caring about the game, and they'll go, oh, okay, well, great, and they'll click away. So it is a little bit about knowing your audience, behavior, and uh, it's nice that you want to stay true to yourself and all that, but that is a personal goal, not necessarily a reason to buy. And I say that all the time because if you focus more on the reason to buy, then more people will buy them and then you can bring out all of your personal goals and people will be able to say, hey, this person was able to do it. These people made it work and uh, follow along because then all the naysayers, they get shut down, right? All right. Now we're on to the RPG stuff, dwarfs and elementals. They got dwarfs and they got elementals. 3D printable stuff. Um, you know, if you really want some awesome elementals, and uh, you don't want these ones, but maybe you do want these ones, get these ones. I'm not going to tell you not to do that, but if you do want some awesome ones, Massive Darkness, the first one, uh, the box set had four elementals in it that all looked pretty good. Uh, they did not have a wood elemental, um, so this is a set that gives you something entirely different from there. Dwarven Wizards, so those are cool looking guys. Um, maybe you can even say that they're gnomes depending on the, the way that they're shaped um, I would expect a dwarf to be a little heavier set but hey they're uh, they're bookish types so maybe they're they're a little tinier but that part's to you if you need them then we have hob sorry hand of doom dungeon de den degenerates oh, I'm tripping over my tongue um, this is one of those that is not morkborg but is like a progenitor to morkborg this one is from goblinko um they make, as you can see, lots of different colors. It's very similar to what you would get in Epic Spell Wars. And um, you might be able to use some of these for different things, like I said, in um, Morkborg. Uh, just because of the, the yellows and the neon colors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if that's what you wanted to do. 
skills, standees, dice, all that kind of stuff. Just a complete way to run through an old school style RPG. Um, as you can see, they have some very old school style <laughs> pieces of art for their, um, their components. And for 70 bucks, it's really not the end of the world. Um, and they have all these different types of adventures and expansions. Uh, yeah, if uh, the, the Morkborg colors are what threw you into the game and you didn't want necessarily the current apocalypse, then maybe the story from this will uh, intrigue you and your other gamers. And uh, check it out. You get divest. So not only are they the worst, you can get your bratwurst out and have a, a real beer and pretzels night. Then again, for the um, 5e compatible crowd, uh, the smaller zines, this is the 14th issue of the Oracle. It feels like it was just been like three weeks since the last one came out. Welcome to Venetia, City of Masks. I think that the last one was still part of this, uh, or at least kicking off this campaign. City of Masks just sounds familiar. Really nice art pieces, photography, uh, costumes, all that kind of stuff. So. If you need more 5e content, you can subscribe, you can buy uh, previous versions, all that kind of thing. Um, this seems to be the place where you can get newer, interesting um, magazines because the newsstands just aren't as aren't the, what they used to be. And then uh, more 5e, we have Over the Next Hill, so six plug-in settlements. So if you, this is the second version, um, if you are into what Morris and they have plenty of content out there are producing then you can get one of these two you can get uh, let's just say what's in here a creek a city of hidden ways beautiful city gazebo bay Roak Creek or Roke Creek whatever that stands for Stonewatch lighthouse and a manor so that's parts pretty cool um, in the first one you had villages uh, mainly so that part was pretty cool um, but now you can expand that out this is what the artwork looks like it is not uh, formatted like a 5e book that comes from Wizards of the Coast, but it is formatted in a way that's consistent. You should be able to get through it no problem and be able to uh, check out all the cool stuff that they've come out with, the dragons and spells and different types of uh, anthologies for archetypes, uh, trinkets and all that kind of cool stuff. Even some ghosts you can pick up from Morris. They've been uh, putting stuff out quite frequently. I'd say every three or four months they've got something out there ready to go. Um, and this time it's just uh, about settlements, but you can always ask them about their other content as well. Then we have the Fungals. This is Bleak Sprout. Um, this is a simple game that is going to be about underdark kind of critters. As you can see, there's, uh, I don't know if they're specifically a Cordyceps virus like you would get from uh, Last of Us. And before Last of Us came out, I will point out, Pretty Dead, my movie, had Cordyceps, Fungi, 2010 is when we made the movie. We were first. So anyway, I remember sitting there and I was like, oh man, they're making a damn game. Same idea I had. And I was pissed. And then I was like, ah, you know, whatever. We're not even in the same space. And we aren't, because that made hundreds of millions of dollars and I made hundreds of cents. So there's that. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's uh, some t-shirts and other cool things if uh, you're interested in uh, the fungals. If you're going to run an Underdark campaign, then uh, fungal stuff will definitely help you out there. It's a source of light, source of food. If you were to look up what people are making, they're even making leather from fungus. Like the packing material that you buy, uh, I don't know if it's from Amazon, but maybe from Best Buy or some of those. Those are all fungal based. They put a bunch of wood chips in a thing. And a week later, they come back, and it's formed exactly to whatever shape you want, and it's super cheap and uh, totally biodegradable and all that kind of stuff. Fungi, man. It's fantastic. It's not just for psilocybin anymore. And then if you're a fan of the smaller game Troika, a lot of zines popped up during Zine Quest for these. Uh, Broken Luck is here. Um, tarot cards, backgrounds, adventure hooks, all that kind of stuff within 28 pages, so... It's a small game. You don't have to go through a whole bunch of extra stuff. Um, it's just a couple of gods, a couple of backgrounds, a couple of things. Um, neat artwork. Uh, it's not beholden to any particular style. As you can see, Kid God there seems very much like Bellerophon uh, holding up uh, the head of the Medusa to the Kraken. All kinds of cool stuff. So they've got some stretch goals. They've got all kind of stuff. Even though it says first created... There is uh, a fair amount of content already out there for Troika if you're interested in it. 
And uh, if you like the Troika video game company, they were pretty awesome. They came out with Arcanum. They came out with, I think, uh, the last great Vampire the Masquerade video game. So it's a good name, but good pedigree. And then a group that does not get as much love as it should. A lot of it is in Unearthed Arcana, uh, Fantasy and Sci-Fi Minotaurs. They're an interesting group. Um, you could even say the Minotaurs are the ones from Fifth Element. You could play like those guys, the the villain guys, um, and play it however you want. You're a Warhammer person. If you play 40K or you play the old school stuff, then you got both set. You got uh, something for in-between in an anachronistic world. Whatever it is you're looking at. When we looked at all of the old Unearthed Arcana, there was the Minotaurs of Kryn in one of the books. There was a whole different society. Um, and uh, you can print these off in resin, as you can see. So, interesting ideas. Cool stuff. Even get yourself a cowboy. Why not check it out if you're playing that kind of campaign? I think that Mouse Ritter box set and adventure collection is like a, a beginner set for the, camp uh, for the, the game. Uh, says it's the first created, 64 backed, so someone who's been around for a little while. I think I've seen Mouse Ritter when people were asking about Mouse Guard, um, and they wanted something to be able to play. If you're already playing Mice and Mystics, then maybe this is a way to move out of the board game and into um, more of a RPG setting. I would say that's where I would start, is playing Mice and Mystics. Or maybe that uh, uh, Mice and Dragons game that was popped up earlier. Maybe you can get both. That part's up to you. Um, but this looks like it's a pretty complete starter kit, GM screen, all that kind of fun stuff. And if you can't get enough pulp sci-fi RPG content, ray guns and robots might be for you. This is Planet X Games Magazine. So you have... Uh, I do not think that this is a vintage uh, piece, but made something, made something made to look like it. Um, but uh, yeah, depending on what it is, the type of characters you play. I have ray guns and rocket ships at the board game. Uh, a lot of the pieces would look great if I were to play both of those together. Um, neat pulp fixtures, uh, pulp characters. And, uh, yeah, even Praying Mantis. I got a Call of Cthulhu uh, expansion or uh, mission, campaign, whatever you want to call it. It has hobos in it, and then you end up with a bunch of uh, Praying Mantids uh, from uh, the Dream World or Space or something that were coming after you. It's awesome. They make a fun character because they're so weird looking and they are voracious carnivores then we have slimes so if you have a resin printer you can do translucent um, uh, printouts which is really cool so these 20 STL files if you were to put them print them off in translucent it would look really cool um, so yeah I mean sometimes they clean your dungeon sometimes they just attack you sometimes they can be affected by magic sometimes they can't you see you have the the little lady here. Um, there was a Clayface episode of Batman the Animated Series where Clayface, part of him broke off and created its own personality as its own little as a girl. You could play that kind of scenario; would be really awesome. Slimes are great. Then, if you are more old school and you need a dungeon crawl classics or mutant crawl classics adventure, the Towers of Doctor Zill and the Years Between are set to make your life a little easier. So that's what you're going to get when these two pop out they have really interesting uh character art um i don't know if that is a drow uh but it's supposed to be maybe it's dr zillis um where they're part spider uh you know the the indy the 5e has the spider queen and all that and um it looks like you have people stuck in ice uh you can get people ready for rhyme the uh, frost maiden using that empire of the cyclops con in November uh, maybe you can play it there if uh, you wanted to play it and you haven't had a chance otherwise and then uh, this is the more fantasy um, adventure steampunk maybe uh, type of thing going on here where uh, they have all the other kind of cool stuff so cool artwork as you can see Dungeon Crawl Classics is one of those where if you don't want to overcomplicate yourself you just want it to be uh, a simple let's play the game kind of mission then uh, this works pretty well and for five bucks you can get a pdf so it is not going to break the bank what could always break your bank is terrain though um this is uh the infernal siege terrain and what happens is it always looks so good that you forget how much you're spending on it <laughs> so um that's what they've got here siege machines trebuchets 
um, some other thing that would just plow through, uh, maybe some type of ballista. Um, 715 BC seems to be the time that they're targeting. They have towers. You can run them up to the walls and set people uh, to go over it. Catapults. Uh, I'm not sure if these were the things people thought they were. I remember seeing something that there was more of a mangonel instead of a catapult being a real thing. But that's, you know, whatever. Um, different types of barricades are obviously helpful. Uh, and plants just thrown in there. <laughs> so if uh, you need any of these cool things, I like this bridge. Um, if you play that one, uh, George Thurow Good and the Destroyer song and talking about who do you love and a house on the roadside and made out of rattlesnake high, got a brand new Chevy with a hood on top and it's made out of human skulls. You have a bridge made out of human skulls. You can play that. Just saying. And if 5e needed anything, it's more options. Tome of Heroes, 5th edition character options. So it's like a different supplement from uh, Cobbled Press this time, but their own version of Xanathar Tasha's, uh, where you can get some cool things for your players. Um, let's see if they talk about them. So PDF, let's go to it. This even looks like a D&D book because it has the same type of art um, that the special editions get. 29 bucks for the PDF. Um, let's see what's in it. Can someone tell me what's in it? Uh, you might get Fireforged and Spindrift sub races. Way of the Wildcat Monk sounds pretty interesting. Maybe they're like a gangrel from uh, uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Um, the Haunted Warden uh, Ranger and the Great Dragon's Warlock. That's something that people were asking for was a dragon um, to be a warlock patron. Um, yeah, we'll see if, uh, if it all works here. I have no doubt that they're going to make it all the way to the Circle of Ash Druid and the uh, Bard of College of Sincerity with Gnome and Cobbled Gear Forge subraces, if that's like a Warforged with a uh, battle armor kind of situation. They are a company. Yeah, see, 132,000 already. So let's scroll back. Don't get dizzy. Uh, they are already here for the Spellsmith. So they're going to break through that 150 with no problem. So you get all kinds of cool stuff for your $29 or more, depending on the type that you want. Um, yeah, so they've got some people here. You can see what all they've been working on. It includes Celeste Conowich, which is one of the Venture Maidens, I think. Uh, she came out with a book three months ago, I'm going to guess. And um, it did really well. Uh, and I might still pick that up in a late pledge. Um, so it looked like it had some pretty good options. And when you don't know what to do with your resin printer and you got a real fancy one, you stick stuff in dice. This is the three dice series three. It looks like they have a color resin printer, something like what Hero Forge would have. And they're making little characters and then encapsulating them in, uh, yeah, you can see them pop up there. So, um, I mean, I doubt they have molds for every single one. That would just take up a ton of space for no reason. But they have a ton of options. Uh, and like I said, I think like for these guys, these are just getting printed off in a color 3D printer. Because that's a, at this level, something that's more um, more sensible for the price. It looks like they're just D6s though, so that they can be larger. But you got like full Pegasus in there and all kinds of crazy stuff. What does it cost? One die is $35. And you get to pick from uh, one of the varieties here that they probably make a lot of. 40 bucks, um, or sorry, uh, $56, you get a set of seven cube dice. So that's all D6s. But they're personalized with a thank you email. Um, this is a very expensive proposition because it is highly customized. You got dragons, you got griffins, you got all this kind of stuff. It's never going to be cheap. So that's just how it works. And Morkborg is supposed to be all about the metal, and what's more metal than the Viking? So this is Kinless. This is a Morkborg solo Viking adventure. So if you've been wanting to play the game, you're know, like me, you can never find anybody, then maybe uh, playing through this will be more fun for you. Um, but this time you're going to play for $15 at the low end. If you want to get the digital version, um, you just play by yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if it'll help you learn the rules a little better so that you can help somebody else join in and have a good time and play for your next session. I had mentioned earlier Call of Cthulhu, I believe, and Delta Green is kind of an offshoot from that. It is a conspiracy-driven version of that. Uh, this is a boxed version that, or sorry, a hardbound version 
so you can take all the stuff from the last 25 years and put it somewhere you can find easy and that's why they're making hundred four thousand dollars they're doing pretty well with that 20 bucks if you'd want to get it in a pdf form um but yeah this is the characters the npcs the options the conspiracies everything that you would have had uh playing call of Cthulhu in this uh more modern style of world um but uh, with all the the crazy weird um conspiracy theories and things and you know cults and whatnot to go along with it so uh definitely one of those games i'd love to play but uh just haven't had the chance and then tracy and curtis hickman the cure for the common game the extreme dungeon mastery second edition uh although you know they're saying fifty thousand dollars and i'm boohooing the board games fifty thousand dollars books do pretty well <laughs> so um the thing is they uh you can make the game fun yourself uh, and you can mix and match. And so that's why they do so well. Uh, this is all about making the game fun. If you were missing something out of your Dungeons and Dragons experience, um, then these guys are going to offer uh, ways to fix things. So be more inclusive, be better, stronger, faster, uh, be less typographically challenged. If that means that there's people that are doing stuff, <laughs> that uh, they don't have to be able to write all the time or type all the time. Um, so interesting ideas about customizing for the people at your table. So that's good. That makes the game more fun. Probably the number one thing that can make the game fun. Mapping uh, the feeling of wonder uh, and how to use miniatures in that kind of world. If you are going to use miniatures, if you're not going to do theater of the mind, um, keeping uh, comedy without just being fart jokes, that is you know something that depending on your table i like a good jackass movie but depending on your table you know you gotta gotta work with who's there and not who you wish was there and then the ho ever hopeful start of a new three-part campaign um it's supposed to be an old school dungeon the demon bone sarcophagus from patrick stewart not that patrick stewart but a patrick stewart and uh yeah so um weird dark creatures fourteen dollars in um, feels more Kaborgi, uh, but I don't know if it's going to complete it. It's just that the, the hard, um, ballpoint pen art style seems to be utilized is why I say that. Uh, we'll see where it all makes. Um, part two is something about blue glass. Part three, palaces of fire. That all sounds cool, but you got to start with part one and see where it takes you. Maybe you get a parrot of many colors. That yeah, would be the most fabulous Kenku, wouldn't he? Codex of the Mind, this is a psionic system because psionics is something that has yet to be well implemented into D&D. I honestly think if you were to take just the special system from Fallout, uh, Strength, Perception, Endurance, uh, Constitution, Intelligence, Agility maybe, and Luck, and then have a separate spellcasting um uh, attribute so I guess it would be specials then that would be fine <laughs> and you can include psionics you can include anything it doesn't matter if you're a warlock sorcerer or anything else they get the same bonuses either way so why not just have a spell casting stat and you could even derive it multiple ways but um, it just is weird that you're required to have a high intelligence necessarily or whatever wisdom actually translates to or having to be high charisma to make your sorcerer bloodline work doesn't make a lot of sense um but you know and and psionics are just like where do they get their powers from it's not from the gods it's not from the weave it's from within their minds i say just throw a spell casting stat solves the whole issue you guys can discuss that if you want let's get back to this uh i'm just being a little more verbose because i, I only got two left <laughs> so <laughs> throw out some ideas i had during the week it's harder to tamp it down when you're you're not feeling well 50, 5 zero subclasses, empathic healers, kinetics, scy blades, all kinds of stuff. New backgrounds, feats, all that kind of business. If you bought the Tasha's book, then there are new psionics in the book that you might be able to integrate. Um, the guys on Dungeon Dudes did some episodes on them and gave them all very high ranks. So uh, maybe you can create a whole world through Arcanus here um, that implements other psionic abilities and uh, make it all work. 
Then uh, winter is coming, so we've heard from the Starks. These are the cold resistant forces, 3D printable STLs. So if you're going to make your own hoth scene, uh, depending on the, the world <laughs> and the time period, then maybe you want to pick that up. These guys all have big jackets, big guns. Um, hopefully they have heaters. The Russians were defeated by the Finns because the Finns used saunas. They had set up mobile saunas and every soldier was able to use the sauna. So they stayed a lot healthier um, during the battles in the winter. And uh, so maybe they'll include that kind of thing in this cold weather uh, printable world. So, you know, and it looks good with the white. Maybe you wouldn't even have to paint it that much. And finally, for Tuesday Night Hall, you have Arena Brutalis 3D printed mechs. So they articulate, so you should be able to move them around. Um, look at this friendly fella. Uh, that part's pretty cool. Um, these are supposed to be for 25 point and 14 points. Uh, I don't know if this is a size based thing or maybe that's in the book, uh, depending on how that part works. Um, but uh, if you're playing Warhammer or any of the other games, maybe you utilize them. As you can see, they all come apart. You can move them around however you like. You even get like a like a like a jack here that goes along with it, Pacific Rim style, holding it together. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> there you go. Then you have uh, full-on armored kitty powers. So that is neat. I like it just as the armature by itself sometimes. But uh, if you want to throw weapons and other cool stuff on there, then you buy it. You do whatever you want. You want to bitch slap somebody? It's right there. It says slap right on it and uh, other cool stuff so resin print your way to happiness and I am going to stop talking right after I say thanks for coming along enjoying it uh, my throat hopefully will recover by Friday we'll see how it goes I'm going to take a nap while this thing renders out if you guys want to leave any comments questions concerns any of that kind of stuff uh, that's always cool Maybe get a nice conversation going. I feel like the space chickens have backed down entirely. And uh, they're afraid of our our uh, Popeyes. Pretty sure that's how it worked. So have a good one. Talk to you Friday.